Hey YouTube, um, my name is Antonella. Welcome to my channel. Most people call me Nella Bella or Bella Nella, whichever one is best for you, and I'm okay with that. Um, so listen up. So today I am going to talk about what do I look for when I am searching for a home church. And just to clear the air, I already do have a home church at my first home, which is Florida. I do have a second home, which is in Canada. However, um, <clears throat> when I was in Canada, I didn't really find a home church. But um, for those who know my story, last year I kind of moved to Canada. And fast forward, now I'm here. But while I was in Canada, I had struggled finding a home church. There were a few things that I was like, expecting and I didn't find. Um, again, I, I actually do want to put a disclaimer. Another one is that there are no perfect church and I don't, I don't expect to find a perfect church because there's no perfect people. So, but when I was looking, there was a few things that I was expecting and I didn't find. So I am going to go ahead and talk about that. So first, number one, when looking for a church, I look for how welcome or how welcoming the people are to newcomers or visitors. That is very important to me when I go into a church. I look how how if the sir, you know, the ushers, I would say, if they're alert, if they are you know, smiling is very important because that show that you know, that's inviting when you see somebody smiling at you. So I look at that and just to kind of give you a little story, I did go to one church in particular in Canada. And I'm not going to say the name of the church. However, uh, I do believe they are a good, they're a good church. But when I went there, my experience was a little hippie. Uh, when I went in, um, the first thing, I went straight to the front desk or the receptionist desk. And uh, there were two young women there. And they were caught up in their conversation, whatever they were talking about. And not even noticing that I was there. I was standing there. And kind of looking around, trying to figure out, okay, where do I go? Because, you know, of course, it's my first time go coming in. And so, there, like I said, they were caught up in their conversation and laughing and giggling and whatever. And so, I was there waiting for a good, you know, minute or two. And so, when I realized they were not going to help me, I just kind of proceeded and looked for other people that were coming in and out and they looked like they were they knew where they were going so I followed through with them and eventually got into the sanctuary so that was one um, the other thing is uh, praise and worship actually I forgot something I forgot to tell y'all something something that happened if you're an usher if you are serving in the church you want to make people feel welcome, okay? It's very important. Look, I just switch out on y'all, okay? Sorry, but I had to. If you have people coming into your church, okay, is and you're at the front, in the front, the front desk, wherever, it's very important. That first impression is so important. You need to make people feel welcome. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. You may feel some type of way about that. But I think, I feel that, when people are coming into the church, they need to feel welcome. That's my, my thing. Like Just like when you have guests coming to your home, your house, you want to make them feel welcome. You want to make them feel like it's their home. You know, like you want to serve them if they need a glass of water or whatever, they're thirsty. You make sure that they feel at ease, they feel welcome. And that's the same thing when you're at in the house of the Lord. You should feel, make people feel welcome. You should not make them feel like they're not accepted or not welcome to the house of the Lord. All right. Moving on. Uh, second thing, praise and worship. When you come in, typically you do hear, start hearing music. And so what I look for, you know, praise and worship is, is important. Um, because, you know, this is where the atmosphere is changed. Um, you should feel the Holy Spirit as soon as you get in, okay? And um, so I, I look for that. I look at the worship leader, if they're reverencing God, if they're just in tune with the Holy Spirit, because you could just tell, you know, how they're reverencing and how they're singing the song, how excited they are or how, 
they just into the, the the worshiping moment, you know, the worshiping and how they leading the people. And so I look at that. I look at because you shouldn't even worry about who's next to you. It's not even about that. It's about you referencing God and giving it all. So I look at that, um, you know, as far as the praise and worship and how the, the atmosphere is shifting and changing and um, how they're ushering the spirit of God and, and how they, you know, and should be in a presence. You should have the spirit dwelling it within you anyways. But um, again, we I look at that. It's not a show. It's not a performance. It's you ministering unto God. All right. Third thing I look for is, you know, by that time is the sermon. The pastor, whoever's preaching. I look at, number one, they need to reference uh, ref, reference the Bible, like the scripture. It's important to have scripture and whatever you're talking about. If you're preaching or teaching, you need to reference uh, scripture, uh, the Bible, whatever you're talking about. I look at if the pastor is just hooping and hollering and just talking about whatever. I understand sometimes you have to make it relatable depending on who you're, you know, especially now in this generation, you want to make it relatable to you, the crowd, I guess. But you, it can't just be about all, you know, just emotional stuff or just your personal life. It needs to, you know, relate to whatever you're teaching or preaching about. So I look at that when they're, the pastor is preaching and, and teaching and, uh, and what he's talking about. It has to be the truth. It has to line up um, with the scripture. And if you're rebuking, you're rebuking with love. I understand sometimes you need to have correction. I, I look at that um, if that's the part of the sermon. So, again, I, I'm not looking to be in a church where he just ho hooping and hollering and you just don't know what's going on, right? Um, when church is kind of over, by that time, um, as a, a first-time visitor, I look for if, you know, the usher is going to give me a tour of the, of the church. I look for that. I look forward to that because if I want to join a church, I would like to know about the history of the church. I would like to know the mission, the vision of the church, what it is about. If you guys are part of the community, if you're helping the community grow or teach, you know, I want to feel like, you know, part of what you guys are actually going, what's going on in the church right now. So I look at that. I look at if the ushers are going to give me a tour if they're going to tell, talk to me about the pastor, I understand they're mega churches and sometimes you may not get to see the pastor or get to be introduced to the pastor. I get that. And so, but I expect to have a tour, at least minimal. I expect to have a tour of the church and you're talking to me about the church and how to join the church and the different ministries in the, of the church. And then lastly, um, you know, um, because, you, like I said, lastly, I think that's it. That's it. Um, I do want to be part of a praying church. Um, and that's it. I think that's all. But um, but those are, but I'm not going too deep, too deep. But these are like my first impression of things I look at or look for when visiting a church for the first time. So that's all I wanted to share with you guys. And, I mean, if you guys have more, that whatever you look for when you search or search for a home church, do share with me. But um, that's all I wanted to share today. All right, guys. Bye.